And joining us this morning to talk about the implications of this third debate, we have our 17 News political analysts on the Democratic side. We have Neil Sinapa, and on the Republican side, we have Kathy Abernathy. Good morning to both of you. Thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. All right, Kathy, I'm going to start with you since this was a Republican debate last night. Who stood out on that stage to you? Well, I think four of the five uh, did did a stronger job than previous. I don't know that Vivek made a lot of new friends or supporters, uh, but uh, I thought that Nikki Haley, I don't think there's a debate on that, really shown last night. She uh, she was very aggressive. She she understands world affairs, and as, as I think no one else does, having worked in the UN, she knows where all the bodies are buried, seemed like. So I thought she really did a good job. Uh, I think the main thing that came out of that between the international affairs, which we don't get that kind of more in-depth discussion, I don't think from our White House. I mean, I, I, what I thought afterwards was, could Joe Biden have sat on that stage and done the kind of debate that these folks did on international issues? Because even in the White House with prepared script, he doesn't go into the detail that Nikki did that Chris Christie about why it's so important to support Israel and, uh, and Ukraine. And so I just thought that uh, what a contrast that we're learning. I learned more watching them and does, do the American people realize that we don't hear this from the White House. We don't hear a real explanation of world affairs, China, what's going on, North Korea, all this, Iran. Uh, and I just thought that that was the biggest message that I took from last night was that contrast. Again, the top person in the polls right now, Donald Trump, chose again not to participate, to hold a rally instead. You were with voters last night. Do they care that he is not taking part in these debates? Do these debates matter to them? Well, the Trump supporters don't seem to care, and and they they liked the candidates last night. We had a debate watch party downtown, and they liked them all, most of them. But when you ultimately said, "Who do you want to support?" Yeah, the hands went up for Trump. I'd say at least half immediately, and probably others still thinking about it. So he's obviously very popular. You know his record. You know how he handles things. But this is an important. It's important that we have these debates with with him or without him is because the issues that the Republicans want to present as an alternative get a chance to be aired. And the contrast with what we're getting from the White House, I think is a real, real important that people notice that. Can't, could Joe Biden have been on that stage last night and answer those questions? I don't think so. All right, Neil, I wanna give you a chance to respond and get your big takeaway from last night. Yeah, I mean, I think that I actually, I mean, I agree with, with Kathy. I think Nikki Haley presented herself as the, the most presidential um, out of everybody else on stage. Um, but at the same time, I think that nobody really uh, challenged Donald Trump. I think that everybody on that stage realizes that the only way that they are going to be the nominee is if something happens with Trump, with either the indictments or he implodes himself. Um, and so I didn't see the, any of them actually challenging him to try and take that top spot from him. And he's way ahead in the polls. So, um, I, I mean, I think it was really a, uh, uh, a debate for second place at this point. And you the, see this Republican more as a primaries. vice presidential debate? Uh, maybe, maybe a VP debate, but I think that, I think there's a lot of uh, punches being held right now because folks don't know um, if they really could go toe to toe and battle Donald Trump um, on the field when it comes to these uh, caucuses and primaries. Florida Governor Ron primaries. DeSantis uh, did sharpen his attacks against Trump last night and he's, he's stood out I think through the last several months as being one who is more willing to uh, go after Trump. However, we've also seen him declining in the polls in recent months. Is, mm. this, is this hurting him? You know, I wouldn't say that he really even got that much more aggressive. I think the fact that someone has 91 counts against them and you, you're not bringing up the fact that there's criminal indictments against somebody uh, is, is really the actual ammunition that someone could use against Trump. I think that, you know, he is trying to differentiate himself because you need to. I think you need to. I think when he came out, he basically, you know, came out as Trump light and folks rather have the real thing. And so he's kind of scrambling and trying to figure out where he's gonna go from, from here on out. All right, so a lot of hot topics hit last night. Uh, abortion was a big one. Nikki Haley said last night that her Republican rivals need to be honest with voters when they're talking about abortion legislation. She said the key, she as she sees it, is coming to a consensus on something that could actually be passed. Um, and she also said she's glad that the issue is back with states. Do you think that Republicans need to refine their position 
on the abortion issue in 2024. Keeping in mind, Tuesday, uh, Republicans saw major losses across the country, especially on um, races where abortion was either directly on the ballot or it was made a, a hot topic by Democratic candidates. Well, the whole point of the Supreme Court decision was that abortion is not a federal right and that it's something for the states to handle. So the states are handling it and we're having elections where that issue is an initiative on the ballot. Uh, I don't think that differentiates, I think that does differentiate with all the other issues that are going on. If the states want to handle abortion issues any way they want, the voters in those states can cast it. I don't think that's a reflection on how they're going to vote for president because I don't know that anyone's going to fight for let's have a national abortion law and campaign on that issue because that is when you're voting for president of the United States abortion if, if that's the number one issue for somebody over what's going on in the world over the economy over the border uh, over crime if that's the way you vote well then you'll have to find a candidate who makes that their sole agenda because you're not going to get a consensus in Congress on, on how many weeks or months and all that so let the states battle it out that's what you saw the other day initiatives we have those same initiatives going on in California it doesn't necessarily reflect how they vote on other issues all right, Neil, really quickly, the big line from Vivek Ramaswamy last night, he had a lot of punches, in fact, but one getting a lot of play this morning, uh, calling out Democrats saying, end this farce that Joe Biden is going to be your nominee. Basically saying President Biden will not be the 2024 Democratic nominee. Is there a chance, is there a world where that happens? Well, I think Vivek's better line was, we're a party of losers when he was talking about the Republican Party. I think that's true. Uh, as far as Joe Biden being the Democratic nominee, I mean, it seems as if that is going to be the case. What I will say, though, and I need to say it while I'm on this platform, is that I feel like the situation in Gaza and what he is doing right now is really, really hurting our coalition. I think he should have called for a ceasefire. Um, I think it's nothing short of genocide that's happening in Gaza right now with uh, thousands and thousands of people dying. Um, and our Democratic Party, you know, I'm willing to call out my own side. I think we're gonna have to figure out how we stitch things back together in order to win next November. All right, thank you both so much. Somebody had killed 1,400 people in Los Angeles. I don't think we would tell our US military to back off. Well, there's a difference between Palestinians and Hamas. All right, thank you both so much this morning for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. All right, we'll be right back.